Hello, I want to be a Roman kitty. No, I don't. Run away. Hello, hello, my historical fashion friends. So in today's episode, I'll be showing you how to make this Roman pala. It is the easiest thing. I know I've said it before that uh, the tunica was maybe the easiest thing, but actually this is, this is literally a rectangle of fabric. So um, if you bought your fabric, you are almost complete with the project. <laughs> I'm also going to be sharing in this video a bunch of the historical Christmas presents I got this year, which I am so happy to share with you. I also decided to do my hair really fancy uh, for today's video, so miraculously for the first time ever, I was actually able to sleep in my soft curlers, which normally I can't. but. I think it was because my cat kept me up for the last two nights, but I slept right through, curlers and all. Uh, so this is my uh, Roman lady hairstyle for the day. I, I tried to get as close as possible to um, some of these styles that are in this book, but um, my hair's not long enough to achieve a lot of these. There's there's a lot of numerous braids wrapped around and my last haircut was a little shorter than expected. Uh, I said I said that I wanted a period haircut, um, but I didn't clarify, this is my mistake, which period. And I meant like super long Victorian and my hair was really long at the time. Um, but he thought I meant like 1940s so I got like a sweet little shoulder length haircut um, which is great for that but I meant just like still super long so this is this is what I could do and I uh, got my super awesome historical middle part going on most of my research for the construction of these garments was from academic papers that I've read. I don't own any books on uh, ancient Rome, but I do have um, The Costume History by August, oh, let me try to do this Frenchly, Auguste Racinet, which I believe is the first time that somebody tried to create a single book composing every time period from basically, I think the first thing is uh, ancient Egypt. And it goes all the way up until the book was written. Uh, so it ends, I think, just after the Regency period. And it also contains, I guess, the closest that he could find to accurate depictions of not just Western costume, but the entire world. So there's all of the Asian um, countries at the time of this. So some of this is like outdated or the names of where certain things are from are old names. But it has a lot of other stuff in it as well, like uh, furniture designs and jewelry and hairstyles and hats. There's some very, very fun medieval hats in here. So this was one of the sources I used, but mostly I referenced academic papers that I could find on the subject. So it said that the pala should be about 11 feet long and about five feet wide, which this, I used to use selvage to selvage on this fabric, um, which I believe is actually 60 inches wide, but I didn't want to like trim it because I wanted to use the selvage to selvage, which as I mentioned in my previous video, in this time period, most garments were woven to size since they were all rectangles. I went and had a nice day at the park and sewed this rolled hem underneath my favorite tree. 
and brought on along a little picnic. Uh, got my tofurkey and vegan potato starch cheese sandwich over here. And some pistachios and dates and some tea. Although my favorite tea right now is the Adagio Teas Honeybush Orange, but it doesn't come in a metal tin. So I just ordered some Honeybush from Harney and Sons, which comes in a metal tin. I love metal tins for tea because they're so useful to like get gifts in or just store random things, especially if you're sewing, you end up with so many little like things that you have to put places. So I just got a plain honey bush and then I'm going to buy some oranges at the store and try to dry my own orange skins. Throw them in. Once you have your 11 foot long by five foot wide about strip of fabric, all I did was a rolled hem on the edges to stop it from fraying. Now this fabric, I couldn't find a piece of wool that I wanted to use that wasn't specifically for another project that I didn't want to have to unpick later. Um, Cause I only buy my wool secondhand. And so I went for linen with this, but this is actually a linen look fabric that I used to use for backdrops when I did photography. And it was the worst for doing rolled hems. I was constantly breaking the thread and it was just really hard to, I think it's a twill weave and it was really, really hard to get the needle through the fabric, which I didn't think it would be because it's the same weight as my other natural linen that I have, which is so easy to do a rolled hem on. But I guess just the difference in there being a synthetic fiber in here, it was so annoying and took twice as long as it would have if it was just regular linen. So if you want to make this garment, step one, buy your fabric. Step two, do a rolled hem. Step three, drape it across yourself elegantly in a variety of different ways as demonstrated here. You've got the over the shoulders, over one shoulder. If it's raining, you can throw it over your head and give yourself a hood. This would work especially well if you were using a wool fabric for this, and it would definitely keep the rain off your head. In some more research I was doing, I was really interested to discover that the color of this, which I had meant to replicate the, I believe is actually pronounced Tyrian purple, is, I should have figured that out because it's from the city of Tyre, which is in Lebanon. And I was interested in the fact that I was naturally drawn to that color and I am also half Lebanese. So, I don't know, maybe my ancestors were like, Choose this color. We used to extract it from snails. Maybe that's why I like snails. Maybe that's why I saved Tony from imminent doom in an orange grove because I had to save a snail to make up for the snails that my ancestors killed. Who knows? If you are Lebanese, maybe one of my Lebanese friends will correct me. I should just call my grandma. But I didn't call my grandma. Uh, and ask how to say Tyrian purple. I've tried to learn Arabic many times, but my knowledge basically consists of phrases that you use in the airport and inappropriate things your cousins teach you at a family reunion. Uh, mostly because no one in, like my mom didn't ever learn Arabic. And the only time Arabic was spoken around me as a child was uh, when people didn't want me to know what was being said. So, yeah, that's why. Uh, I did live in the Middle East for a short amount of time as a child, but um, I was on like an American base, so I didn't really learn much Arabic. Uh, I was only there from ages like three to six and a half, so we had like barely started learning letters. Although I do like that the books open this way and the writing is much more conducive to my left-handedness. So, Shame, really. 
Now I'm going to share some of the historical gifts which I got for Christmas. Starting with the thing I've been using the most, which is this 18th century sewing kit from Townsend's. If you're here and you don't already watch Townsend's and you like historical things, particularly 18th century, uh, you need to go watch John Townsend. He is um, my hero because he seems to be the happiest man on earth. Just, he's so good at talking for an endless amount of time. His videos, like some of them have no cuts and he's talking for like 15 to 20 minutes. And um, I went to theater school and let me tell you, I have a lot of cuts. So what's in here is a tiny pair of scissors, which I love. This is awesome for cutting off the seam allowance when you want to fell your seams down. Then this is some waxed thread. Very exciting. In here is a little needle container, which has some pins and various sizes of needles, including uh, this needle, which has a very sharp pointy end. <clears throat> which has a very sharp pointy end, which I think would be good for like leather working. It seems particularly robust. Has this, the cutest little wooden holder. In this pocket is some thread, just regular, plain. It, I don't know if it's cotton or linen. It's got more of like a coarse texture than a lot of modern threads. Here's a little wooden thimble. And then some super cute period buttons. There's two of each kind. This one is a little wooden plain one. This seems to be a little wooden black one. And this is like a little pewter button. Then all you have to do is like roll it up. Do a little do 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 do. Roll it up and then you can take it with you. This was awesome because I took it to the park and had a lot of fun. Okay. Next, I got this, which is a ruler of rulers. It's got all the rulers of England, starting with Roman Britain and going all the way to uh, uh, the lovely Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, we did a fun game, my husband and I, where I tried to name these all in order, and then I tried to name the US presidents in order. And I was better at this one, so. No one remembers James Monroe. Next present was the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking, which I have been wanting for so long and I now have it. I'm going to make uh, two gowns from this on my uh, series adventure that we're on right now. Uh, one of them being the sack gown. <clears throat> you can see how gorgeous Abby Cox looks right there. And then the next one being the Italian gown. Uh, there's also instructions for like little butt pads that I'm gonna do. And uh, I also received this custom bookmark that my husband made of Elizabeth Bennett's striped dress from the 2005 Pride and Prejudice, which is my favorite movie of all time. Although it's now a close tie with the Kenneth Branagh Cinderella. I will also be trying to make this dress on this series. My next gift is a reproduction jewel necklace. I think this is from Jewels of the Past, although he tried to hide the boxes from me, so I'm not positive. 
Uh, it is a reproduction of Demelza's necklace from Pole Dark. I believe it is the one which uh, Ross like tries to gamble away in an attempt to ensnare someone. Um, <clears throat> so I will be wearing this a lot. Well, let me tell you, my Italian gown is going to be styled after the colors of uh, Demelza's like teal dress. So, I will be wearing this with that. Also from English Heritage, which is where my Ruler of Rulers was from, is this sort of large tea towel, which is also of the Rulers of England, and even includes poor Jane, who is omitted from the Ruler of Rulers. Her head was sadly removed. Uh, this one my husband bought to replace the other one I had of this, uh, which sadly met its demise in a fire which uh, came to be from me accidentally leaving the towel on the stove and then turning the stove on. Yikes! What are you doing? Don't get my necklace. This is not a toy. Not a toy. And now, a gift from my dad, which is uh, from. Here, I have the label. This is from Maggie May Fashions, and it is a lace pelerin. And uh, he also gave me this little cameo brooch. Uh, so I will be wearing this with some of my 19th century dresses, which are so far in the future that it will be nearly the end of the year by the time I'm making them. But this is very stylish and I did wear it on Christmas Day, so. What are you doing? My cat is bouncing. So that is it for the Christmas gifts I have right now. Although my mom did get me a gift card to Burnley and Trowbridge, so I have ordered some stuff and it's on its way, but it didn't get here yet. So I'll do a separate video because that has a bunch of things in it. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for some tablet weaving where I make some uh, very cool belts for this outfit and then a final reveal and little short film to show off the look. And after that, we will be moving on to the Middle Ages. Be sure to away with you, bus. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and go follow me on Instagram at gabrielle.westwood. Thanks for watching!